this morning. It's Tuesday, July the 10th. And this week is going to be a lot, as we said, on Monday. A heavy, heavy. We're in Nigeria's political capital, Abuja, Abusa, and Mofaya, wherever you're watching us at this time. Development finance institutions are interested in what happens to big ticket transactions and they follow the money. So let's follow Tony Okwanachi, who is the CEO and managing director at the Development Bank of Nigeria, here with us to have a few words ahead of tomorrow's AfriXim annual meetings here in Abuja. Tony, it's good to have you here. Thank you, Blossom. It's very interesting. Nigeria is hosting this event for the first time, and we could just say, yes, this is something that is good for the country, considering that when you talk about trade finance in Africa, Nigeria is a major market. Exactly. Um, again, the fact that they are the 25th anniversary of the African Bank and bringing their AGM to Nigeria, that underscores the importance of Nigeria within the context of African trade. Again, if you look at it, the opportunities within Africa, into Africa trade, and even trade within Africa and other con the continent, other continents, is quite huge. So coming in at this time, where Nigerian businesses also looking for access to foreign markets, is a, a very important time for us. Yes, when we talk about uh, AfriXim or the African Devel Development Bank, these are DFIs, and your institution, the Development Bank of Nigeria, is also a DFI. So this is a week in which all of you will get busy to discuss the big issues around infrastructure, uh, basic infrastructure, agri infrastructure, MSMEs funding. What are the key things that uh, your bank, your DFI, will be looking to into one today, the uh, AFDB? Africa Investment Forum, and from tomorrow to the rest of the week, the AfriXim annual meetings. Now, for us, uh, on two sides. First, are the infrastructure, like you said, overall industrialization of Africa. That's the team that has been running along, and we want to see how that gets moved forward. So, discussing with the African um, the Investment Forum, we're going to look at a lot of such projects. Now, looking at projects specifically that will lead to this infrastructure development we are talking about, which is the bedrock to be able to build the economy of most African countries. So that's a good one. And so about DFIs, like you know, it's going to be, they're going to be demonstrating specifically those projects that are being financed and the impact they're going to make. So that's on the African Development Bank side. On the African Bank side, again, a lot of business within Africa, but they are all within the local, uh, local setup. They are not able to export to other countries. So coming in of um, African to Nigeria, bringing all other African countries in, this is an opportunity for businesses to be able to know that opportunities are out there for them to export their goods. For the Development Bank of Nigeria in particular, where we focus on micro, small, and medium enterprises, one of the challenges also face is access to other markets for their products. So this will be a good opportunity to see first, apart from getting funding locally, they can also get lines, straight lines from this um, um, African Bank and other um, DFIs outside there. Secondly, they are also able to get markets for their products, and that encourages them to be able to produce and then meet standards for international market. Uh, as a CEO, what would you like to hear from uh, either EFDB or the AfriXim Bank in terms of, in particular AfriXim, when it comes to trade finance? What do you think are the key problems for our own market in terms of getting the exposure into the global marketplace when we talk about Sub-Saharan Africa? Well, I think, to me, what I'll be looking out for, for first and foremost, is how much lines are also going to create for most banks, because most banks are the intermediaries. I know that after the, the local banks, the local banks, yes. yes, the local banks. I know that the Royal created about 800 million lines for bank, and more of them are going to go. We're going to see how much lines are going to. They are going to take feedback from bank. How come they are not using these lines? What else do they need to do to ensure that they are able to have access to this and create opportunity for these businesses to access the funds to be able to export and also import? In there. So I'm going to listen to like to hear that from coming from African Bank. Uh, in terms of best practices, I'm sure we're talking about infrastructure, and logistics is a problem, and we know that in Nigeria here. Do you think we have uh, issues to do with tariffs, or what you call the common tariff if we talk about West Africa? Uh, are there some of these issues that are coming through from the MSI, MSMEs, or the banks that intermediate or from your bank to the end users within the Nigerian space? So for now, most of them, most of the MSMEs in Nigeria are usually are focused locally. And what we want to encourage them to say, you have the West African market, you have the African market, you, have to look, you can look beyond that. Now, first, are they able to meet the local de de demand? Yes, some of them are able to, but they're also looking for some of the products too are also required and all that. That creates a lot of competition 
for their products and enable them to be able to get, you know, in terms of standards, standardization of their products. So we see as they open that market for that for them to West Africa, even with beyond West Africa to Africa, that's also impact greatly their business. I know your bank has quite some money in your kitty. <laughs> but again, <laughs> but again <laughs> no money is ever enough. Yeah. Uh, if you get some money to the World Bank, they're going to pick it up from you. Yeah. Nobody's going to say no. Yeah. So I'm not sure uh, your bank, uh, Development Bank of Nigeria, will say no if AFDB or Afregim says, well, there's a few millions of dollars you can own with lending. Are you looking to raise the level of capitalization or so that the bank currently has to intermediate more within the local market as you're encouraging uh, uh, local MSMEs to step outside the shores of Nigeria into other markets? Yes. Uh, you know, currently, Africa is in, uh, African Development Bank itself, apart from providing uh, equity for Development Bank of Nigeria, they also provide a debt for us. So we have both sides from them. From African Development Bank alone, almost $500 million has been provided for D DBN. So but as, we, as we deploy them to finance these businesses or these small businesses, we ensure that by the time we're able to go back, good use of the funds, we'll be able to get, assess them more. Again, for the African Bank itself, for this small business, like I said, access to such funding for, uh, uh, for their business to be able to do exports is quite key. Now we're hosting this major event. Give us your thoughts about this new EFCFTA. Well, I think the idea is, is quite good because it's going to create market across Africa, make market, uh, Africa one of the biggest free trading zones. That's the idea. And the ability for big uh, businesses to be able to trade within Africa a lot. Of, that's the idea. I know Nigeria is still studying it, uh, trying to find out how it will benefit Nigeria. There are some concerns about whether uh, Nigeria will become a dumping ground or that, but all those issues are being discussed. And I'm sure by the time uh, these are cleared, then of course uh, we'll be able to see the benefits for it for Nigeria. Do you believe in inter Africa trade? Of course. I believe in inter Africa trade because that is the starting point for any trade. Because first and foremost, the goods we produce within Africa, right? We have huge consumption base in Africa that can uh, utilize such goods. So why don't you start from the your immediate environment before you begin to talk about going across continent. And the more you are able to do, you'll be able to create, like I always say, create the standard and able to be able to compete even beyond Africa. So if you have a huge market within Africa, you increase the uh, uh, inter Africa trade, of course that will lead to greater diversification of the economy of Africa itself. I got one final question for you. What do you think is the greatest problem or impediment or challenge to inter Africa trade? Well, is it cash? Is it infrastructure? Is it logistics? What is it? Well, different countries are at different levels of development. So they are, you have, sometimes logistics is a problem. Sometimes there are, are still some tariffs that you need to, uh, barriers that you need to get around. Some things that some country-specific uh, regulations that has not enabled free flow of this trade. So some of these things are, being ad as, are to be addressed to be able to get the right impact. Uh, very interesting. Uh, and uh, Tony Oponachi, we thank you very much for speaking with us here. As we all get ready for what's going to be an interesting day yeah, yeah. today, Tuesday, with the EFDB and from tomorrow, the Afrexit Bank. Looking forward to see you at one of those sessions and maybe got to hear more from what you have in mind uh, with those two institutions. That's uh, Tony Oponachi, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at the Development Bank of Nigeria.